All right, gang, the last type of transformation that we're going to talk about is that of the reflection. We talked uh, in the last video about the A term, how that makes it skinny or fat. Well, if it's positive or negative, determines whether or not it's reflected across the x-axis. If A is negative, it's reflected over the x-axis. But there is another type of reflection, and that is if there's a negative that's inside the parentheses attached to the x. So I first want to explain to you why a, uh, a negative results in a reflection. If you just think that you know that y is equal to f of x, okay? y is equal to whatever the function is. So if you just put a negative 1 in front of f of x, it takes all your y's from being up here, it makes them now negative. It flips it across the x-axis, so now it's down there. Okay, so that's why we have these reflections. That's why they occur. Okay, so... Um, in the graph that's there, you can see the, the standard y equals x squared. If I take y equals negative x squared, it's taking all those values that are positive up here, where y is positive, and it's making all of them negative. So it flips it across the x-axis. So it looks like that. We're still mindful of those 1, 1 points. All right. Interestingly, for odd functions, a, f a reflection across the x-axis looks exactly the same as a reflection across the y-axis. Okay, so on the left-hand graph there, you see a standard x-cubed graph. When I take and put a negative in front of it, it flips it across the y-axis. So that, I'm sorry, across the x-axis. So that this point up here gets reflected down there. However, it's going to look the same if it's reflected across the x-axis as well. Instead of being from there to there, now it's going to be from there to there. And you're still going to end up with that exact same curve. All right, <clears throat> for the reflection across the y-axis, the negative sign is with the x inside of the parent function. But what i like you to do is rearrange the equation first so that x is actually positive. All right, let's take this example here. If you take a look at 3 minus x underneath that radical, that 3, since it's positive, would indicate to you that it should be moved to the left. But in actuality, that's not true. What I'm going to do is factor out the negative here. So I'm still maintaining the same signs that I had before. I still have a negative x and a positive 3. But now you can see that it doesn't actually move left 3, it moves right 3 spots. That is the reason that I want you to rewrite the equations. Okay, the negative on that x is going to tell you that there's a reflection across the y-axis. But if you don't rearrange it, it's going to have you go the wrong direction for the uh, horizontal transformation. Okay, yeah, the negative is inside the parent function. Okay, so... Let's take this example right here. Let's rewrite that and then take the time to graph it. All right. Um, I want to pull that negative outside of the x, and that's going to change the sign of the, of the 4 as well. All right. So there's four different things that we know about this graph. First of all, uh, so there's five. Because the first is we know it's a cube function. The one-third tells us that it's a fat graph. 
The negative in the parentheses tells us that is reflected across the y-axis. The plus 4 tells us that it moves left 4 spots. The plus 3 tells us that it's up, up 3 spots. All right, so we just did an example of rearranging that negative sign on two equations. Let's go back to that radical one and graph it. Okay, so first of all, identify what your parent function is. In this case, it's square root of x, and you can see that in the graph. Okay, next we know that it moves right three spots. And the last thing is that it's reflected across the new y-axis. Okay, so I'm not talking about taking this thing and, and reflecting it way over there. The reason that we did those transformations first is because this is essentially our new axis. Let me blah, let's backtrack there. Okay, this is our new axis. My reflection occurs from here to there. That is the final graph. And we're still mindful of that 1, 1. Okay, back to that cube function. What does the parent function look like? It's a cube. All right, it's left four spots. It's up three spots. And I hope you can see that orange set of axes moving right along with it. Okay, I reflect it across the new y-axis, so it's going to look like, instead of that, it's going to look like that. And then don't forget, we had a one-third there, which means it's going to be fatter. It's going to be outside of those one-one spots. And so it's going to look like that. And you can see how the one-third compares to the one-one spot. All right. I'm going to leave the practice for the next video. Adiós.